Today we're going to be talking about combining trigonometric functions with some other functions you may have had from algebra, specifically linear, quadratic, and exponential functions. And we're going to combine these by adding and by multiplying. So um, I have here in this sketch some options kind of already set up. So here we have a, um, a trig function, which right at the moment uh, you can you can control the a, b, c, and d of this, so it's a sine wave. And so this particular function is uh, y equals sine of pi x. Um, so well, let's just graph that. And notice that this has a period of two, so it hits the x-axis at all the integer values. So that's kind of a good one for us to start with. And let's see what happens if we take a, a linear function. This is y equals, um, here's a linear function, y equals um, 3x plus 1 right at the moment. I can change the slope and the y-intercept there. Now, what if I add these together? Let's just kind of see what's going to happen. Well, every time we get an integer value, we're going to be adding 0. So it's going to be a point on this line. And notice we're going to never deviate from the line more than one vertically. So right here at, at uh, one half will be one above the line. Here at one and a half will be one below the line. So when we graph f plus g, notice that we have a wave going along the line. So let me explain a couple of things that, that we might have uh, going on here. So a linear function would represent something that's growing at a steady rate. So for example, this is three units per three y units per x units. So let's say for every for every year we're going up um, we're going going up uh, three units. But a sine wave on the other hand would represent something that fluctuates up and down, perhaps maybe going seasonally. Well, what if you had f plus g? This might represent something that's growing, but then fluctuating uh, seasonally within that. And so you see something that's overall growing, but a seasonal fluctuation. Okay. All right, so let's take a look. Let's see if we can maybe experiment with this. Let's see. I've got b is pi right at the moment. Uh, what if I make it go up and down a little f more. Okay, let's see. Let's make A, B. Let's let A be 2. Now we've increased the amplitude. Now we've pre increased the amount this thing is going up and down within that. So it's going up 2 from vertical and down 2 from vertical. And so you can kind of see what's happening over the long haul there. Okay, um, let's take this back to 1, oh, not 21, just 1. Okay, now let me look, okay, so let's, let's take that concept a little further. Um, What if instead we're looking at a, a quadratic graph? So let's just start with y equals x squared first. So let's see, this h would be 0, k would be 0, and a would be 1. That would be y equals x squared. Let's graph that. Well, now what's it going to do? Well, it's going to be centered up on this curve. If I add that these two functions together, they're kind of centered up on here, so every time that the sine wave hits zero, the sum is going to hit the axis. Uh, not the axis, but it's going to hit the, the this curve here. It's sort of a new center line, but it's not a line anymore. It's a parabola. So it's kind of centering up on that and going up and down. So we could have something like that or a portion of this make, matching our graph. Of course, if we we shift this over, let's say, shift the parabola over to the right too. 
Um, that does that. What if we shift K up by 3? Then we're shifting the whole thing up there. Okay, what if we put a negative in front? You can kind of see how these things will affect the graph. Okay, what about over here? What about an exponential? Okay, another basic kind of function we study in algebra. Uh, y equals c times e to the kx. This is an exponential decreasing function, so negative, uh, let's say negative 0.5 for k, just y equals e to the negative 0.5. And it would come down like that. Let's give it a little bit bigger uh, y-intercept here. Let's put that up to 5. And so we have a decreasing exponential, an exponential decay function. If we add that to our function here, we see it coming, coming down here. And at some point, it becomes pretty hard to distinguish it from a sine wave because this exponential uh, right here is getting closer and closer to, uh, to zero. So as this goes way out here, it's getting closer and closer to zero. So as these things, as these graphs go out to the right, uh, this one, the, uh, the trig function here, and the sum are getting real close together. But as we get over here where the exponential is really big, you can see more uh, where it deviates from the regular sign. Okay? But notice that, that when you're adding them together, it kind of follows that, that uh, curve. It goes up and down around that curve. Okay? Now, let's go back here. And look at what happens if we multiply, okay, these functions together. Well, the thing to notice is this, okay. Let's just say you have this one, a is 1, and so this is sine of pi x, okay. So our function is y, our first one is y equals sine of pi x, okay. And we know that sine of anything is going to be between 1 and negative 1, between negative 1 and 1, going left to right, or bottom to top, I guess. Okay, well, if we multiply this by some positive value, it's going to be between these. So let's say we multiply this by, by x, if x is, let's say, x squared, then we're going to get sine of pi x between x squared and minus x squared. So x squared times sine of pi x is going to be bounded by those other two curves. So let's take a look at that. Uh, let's get that. Let's get this about y equals x squared going here. So if I set h and k back to 0 and a to be 1, then this is y equals x squared. And notice that we get that, and then here's minus x squared. And notice that the graph is oscillating between these two functions, between x squared and minus x squared. It's bouncing up and down between these two. Now, notice that whenever uh, we get, whenever the sine is 0, since we're multiplying here, the, uh, the product's going to be 0 as well. Or if either or the boundary curve, the other one's zero. Either one's zero, we're going to get zero. So we get a zero there. And so it has the same roots, periodic roots. But this is not really a periodic function because you can't just shift it and it'll be the same. But every time we get sine is one, it meets the top curve, and whenever sine is negative one, it meets the bottom curve. But one thing's kind of interesting. If we uh, zoom in here close, you can see. Um, you can kind of see it, I think you can see it pretty well right here. That it's interesting is that the minimum is not where it actually hits the curve. It actually, a little bit to the right of the minimum of the sign is where the minimum of this product is. But the, the two curves do touch each other. The 
minus x squared and the and this graph, these two touch each other exactly when the sine is at a minimum. And similarly, when the sine is at a maximum, these touch, but that's not the maximum here. You can see it really well there, too. And if you zoom out a bit, you can really see it following that. You can see it bouncing up and down between those boundaries. Okay, so this one is getting wider and wider as we go away from the uh, uh, from the the x-axis. Okay, let's uh, so it looks like that. Okay, let's look at something that let's look at this exponential decay function e to the x and then e to the minus x and let's uh, let's let it start up quite a bit higher let's let it start at 20 and maybe not decay quite as fast it's faster sorry okay that's not as fast of a decay Right. Now, look what happens whenever we graph the product of just a sine of pi x and this. It's going up and down. Let me get this real graph more of it. So, let's go to properties and we'll get the domain here. So it's negative 100 to 100. That ought to do it. And now you can see this. So, we get this thing bouncing up and down. Notice that every time this sign, let's also get the domain on that one to match. Okay, so the sign is going up and down forever here. Whenever the sine is zero, the product is zero. So these are crossing the x-axis at exactly the same place. In this case, since I've got sine of pi x, this is all the integer values is where it's hitting 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. Okay? But notice that as we go further to the right, the, the amplitude is not constant. So the sine wave, the black one here, the amplitude is 1 all the time. But as, you going, as you're going here, it starts out really, really big over here to the left, bouncing up and down. And then as it comes in this way, it's bouncing up and down less and less and less and less and less. This would be something we would call, we would call this damped oscillation. Okay. And it's going in uh, smaller and smaller and smaller as we go further and further out to the right. There, you can just see that. And of course, the graph itself is just this graph. And so it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes out to the right. This would be something like a... Uh, uh, maybe you had a spring motion, but you had some friction in the spring. And so it, now it's, it's going up and down, and now less and less, or a pendulum. Now it's going less and less and less and less as we go along. Of course if this function is exponential, if it's increasing function on the other hand, then it's getting bigger and bigger vibration uh, or uh, up and down bigger and bigger as it goes out to the right. Okay, uh, let's hide that. And look at what happens if we have uh, just a linear one. Let's say we have a decreasing function, negative 3 here, and let's put uh, 15 here. So we're coming in like that. the uh, 
product there. Again, you can see the boundary curves are A times that. So now if we, if we multiply the amplitude, if we double the amplitude here, notice uh, this graph here is no longer the boundary. It's A times the, uh, the, the G curve, which is the boundary, and then opposite of that. So this is, uh, see the negative 3 has a slope, this one, but it's times 2. So this is a slope of negative 6. This is a slope of positive 6. And you can see it bouncing back and forth between those two things. So kind of interesting how these things can, can, can be uh, compared. So one of the places we could see this sum, where we saw something like this, so this might be a long-term decay, uh, but within that, a seasonal fluctuation. That could represent maybe sales. Hopefully, uh, if you're a tour company, you want it to be growing, maybe more like that, but a long-term growth within that, a seasonal fluctuation. That could be a very possible thing if that long-term growth is linear. Long-term growth is uh, exponential. Uh, then it might look like, um, let's see, might look more like that. Where it's following an exponential curve. And the product thing, uh, like this one here, for example, Something like that might represent a um, cyclic or up and down kind of pattern, but where it starts big and gets smaller as it goes along. Something like, uh, like again, like a pendulum or spring or something, but which, which in an ideal situation would, would be like a sine wave, but in this case, um, there's some friction involved, so it's getting smaller and smaller as it goes out. So there are some real-world examples of these things as well. So some interesting ways we could do these. Of course, you can take any kind of graphing uh, program, and then, like your graphing calculator, for example, and graph some things like this as well.